Hello guys, it's been a while. I haven't seen you for almost two months. Uh, and I'm very happy that I'm here again. First of all, I gotta wish you all the best in 2024. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Uh, also, have a nice upcoming New Year's Eve. Uh, I also uh, have to remind you that as a Serbian team captain, we just became for the first time in Serbian history European team champions. So it's amazing uh, accomplishment for all of us. And uh, thanks to the guys who played for Serbian team, uh, Aleksandar Pratki, Alexei Sarana, Aleksandar Indic, uh, Robert Markus, Velimirivic, and together with me, uh, Grandmaster Miloš Perunovic. So uh, here, uh, in the meantime, I just played one... Uh, European Blitz and Rapid Championship and I want to show you and to present you uh, my most beautiful game. Uh, recently uh, it was even great from theoretical point of view because I came up with something crazy and as you see on the board you have a very lovely uh, type of position that I guess all of you would like to uh, play with the black pieces. But let's actually go to the game and see how did it happen and how did I uh, beat an FM from Slovenia. The guy played e4 and lately when I want to play against these younger players, I just go with e5 because it's good approach when you play against younger guys who are familiar with the theory to play e5 to calm them down, to slow down the game and just to t send a message okay if you play right up as Italian uh, we just have to play you know like a slow game where you won't be able to go and rely on analysis so I go e5 knight f3 knight c6 and my opponent went for a uh, scotch opening as you know uh, scotch opening is a very interesting line by white uh, used to be very popular when Gary Kasparov uh, played with a white pieces. Uh, he was an amazing uh, representer of that opening. Uh, back then, it was like 30 years ago, but nowadays, Scotch isn't considered to be that good anymore. When I say isn't considered to be that good, I mean, when Kasparov used to play it, it was amazing opening for white. Then, uh, when Kasparov became Carlsen's coach, Carlsen tried to use it, but it didn't go that well. Uh, nowadays, uh, here and there, they play some scotch openings with the white pieces. It's, of course, all together with Rai Lopez, an Italian opening, one of the main openings by white. But it's not that efficient and dangerous as it used to be. Of course, I captured, knight takes d4, and there are so many options. Knight f6, bishop c5, uh, queen f6, uh, bishop b4. Even taking on d4 is very common. d6 goes to the Philidor defense. I opted for one of the possibilities. It's knight f6. Here, uh, white can easily opt for knight c3, which is like scotching the four knights, uh, where you can just go with the bishop before. And lately, more and more popular knight takes c4. Uh, I just decided, yes, uh, I didn't make mistake. Don't worry if 94, 94, queen e7, maybe I can just sometimes do this variation for you with the black pieces. But the thing is, my opponent opted for the, absolutely the main move uh, for white. It's knight takes e6. I played b takes e6 and he went for e5. It's absolutely uh, the best and the most critical variation. I played queen e7, he played queen e2 and I went for knight e5. After he played c4, and by the way, c4 is just one of the options. Uh, lately, more and more popular is h4, which gives white bishop g5, which gives white bishop h3. It's very interesting for white, and I believe it gives a uh, game with the mutual chances on both sides. Uh, my opponent went for c4, and here I just had to decide whether I want to play knight going back to b6 or maybe bishop a6. Somehow, uh, I believe that more solid is knight b6, but for these faster time controls for rapid and blitz games, you can use bishop a6 simply because the queen is pinned and you just want to make a castle if possible. My opponent went for b3 and I played amongst many moves where I once again had to uh, pick the variation. 
I usually play g6 because it's the main, the most solid. You want to play bishop g7, short castle, go after the pawn on e5, and take advantage of the uh, exposed queen and king on e1 and e2. That didn't happen in the game, and I just went for a long castle because, just like I tell you, uh, this was a, a faster time control, and I just rely on these trickier opportunities in these faster time controls. I was expecting my opponent to play bishop b2, in which case I would play f6, undermining the center, and playing a game like this, he moves and unpins the queen and threatens the knight, I would go back, here you win the pawn, go back with the bishop and break with d5. The position is completely crazy, and I'd say with mutual chances, yes, we do have like a possibly weak king on c8, but we also um, uh, were up a pawn and somehow we have a very strong control of the center. My opponent went for absolutely the most popular move and uh, move that everyone simply does here, it's g3. I have to say that g3 is pretty good because in some of these lines uh, you want to play uh, g5 and maybe if they play f4 we won't be able to do it. Also, they want to go with bishop g2 followed by short castle with fast development and on top of all that uh, there is also a line where they play bishop b2 and queen g5 so players don't like this because black threatens bishop b4 and because of all this g3 is absolutely uh, the best idea i was thinking uh, what should i play against uh, g3 uh, you know that i like pretty wild style and uh, lots of tactics i also like to attack and i said okay I made a long castle, so it's time for me to go with opposite side castle and attack with h5. h5, for my taste and for myself, was novelty. Then I checked and I realized that altogether with my game that is already published in the database, there are like five or six games more with h5. My idea was simple. A, I want to make the short castle, but here I'm sending a message. Amen. If you make a short castle, I'll play h4 and I'm going to attack you. So this is one of those moments where you try to psychologically uh, put a pressure on your opponent. And you're just sending him a message. Man, watch out what you're going to do. If you play short castle, you might regret. And my opponent regretted. You'll see why and how. By the way, once again, a young FM2300. So after h5, he went for h4. I gotta tell you that bishop, H, bishop g2 is something that doesn't uh, scare me because I just play h4. And if that one, uh, I, was, I was prepared to go with f5 and to go with g5. Simply, when I play like this, uh, you can never develop the dark square bishop somewhere because I'm, I might go with the queen on g5 as well. For example, bishop b2, I just capture play like this. I'm having so many threats at the same point. Bishop c5 going for that diagonal and the weak king on g1. f4, even knight f4 in some moments. And on top of all that, queen h6 lining up my heavy pieces along the h5. My opponent uh, played move that I expected here, h4. And I just played rook e8 going after the weak pawn on e5. I just have to tell you one thing. Uh, that I checked this game on the engine and I absolutely played almost a uh, fascinating game almost without a mistake. So uh, here he played bishop b2 and I said, okay, uh, you somehow got stuck in the center with two pieces. I used to play scotch when I was younger with white pieces and I know how annoyed I used to be when the queen stand on e2 being pinned by this bishop and king uh, being exposed on e1 and not having castle yet. Take a look at this. I'm going to flip up board, and you just have to, you just have to admit that it's not easy to play this with a white pieces. Although if there was a guy, absolutely amazing with white playing scotch, that was Gary Casper when he did it. Just like I said, I flipped the board on purpose just to fill the danger of this position. Uh, 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 by when when black plays uh, aggressively enough and how this queen on e2 and the king on e1 stands in the game. He went for f... I actually went for f6 and my opponent went for bishop g2. I said, let me just get a pawn. He played short castle and here 
without any thinking, I said, okay, I gotta go all in. Otherwise, he just wants to go queen d2, unpinning himself, threatening knight, and transposing the queen with tempo uh, like this. Also, I'm fairly happy that I have a possibility not to bring my knight back on b6 because it's gonna chase it with a4 and a5, but to go back on f6. And here, I didn't want to uh, hesitate I didn't want to wait I just went for g5 g5 is a nice move I'm breaking on the king's side and I immediately knew if he takes I just want to go with h4 I have the h file I can always line up like this I can take by rook I can even play knight f4 if he takes and uh, I'm going to crush him so bad because bishop can also go on c5 he went for a queen d2 and queen d2 is a critical move that I expected here to happen it's a very nice tempo move. And here, you don't have time to take because they take the knight. And if you take, it's extremely dangerous as far as I'm concerned because they have three pieces. They got a bishop pair and we don't have enough pieces around our king. I didn't want to take any kinds of risks here. And I said, okay, I don't want to play like this. Here, I thought, should I go back with the knight on b6? even this idea crossed my mind and that idea according to the engine was best because after g takes g takes queen a5 believe it or not uh, to exclaim mark moves f3 absolutely um uh, marvelous uh, trick with f3 and when they take you just go here you're down to pieces but they don't have time to take because after king h1 queen h4 is made well after bishop g2 Queen g7 is unavoidable mate. An uh, absolutely uh, ridiculous type of sacrifice, uh, but it does work. So after queen d2, I, it crossed my mind to play knight f4, but I said, why should I? Uh, and uh, should I go back with the knight on b6 to have it around the king to defend myself? Or should I go on f6 so I can place it possibly on the king's side and to go with the attack? So I said, okay, I want to attack, let's go, all in. And here, I believe he made one of inaccuracies in the game. Uh, he took by pawn. I was expecting queen g5, but to be honest, I was expecting and I wasn't expecting because uh, after bishop h6, queen f5, knight g4, I absolutely realized that if I go with a rook f8 afterwards, He's going to have lots of problems on the f-file and somehow initiative will be on my side. I can even raise that type of initiative with these kinds of threats and uh, stuff cope with uh, diagonal uh, g1 a7 also with the possibilities of some sacrifices on f2. Uh, he captured on g5, I played knight g4 and this is what I was looking for. Here uh, I was calculating that if f3 uh, my knight would be trapped, but I have check this one and then h4 would be checkmate. So he can't take knight because after this it's checkmate to the king. I, he would have to give it up like this and you're just finding a way to meet the king. So actually to win the queen. So he played knight c3 after quite a big thinking and I played h4. And after h4 I'm just opening up file. Uh, he still cannot play f3 because of the same kinds of things and this would be mate. So uh, he was supposed to play bishop h3. I saw that move uh, during the game. I said myself, okay, I would take it. And when he takes, I don't know, should I go with... Uh, I saw queen h7 and then I was wondering, uh, would, he, would he be able to defend that position with queen d7? So most likely I would go with rook d8 and I said myself, okay, I can play this game. Because in some scenarios, I saw that if he goes like this, I can go here, threatening some mate, go with the bishop c5, and somehow I said myself that the king is uh, in a pretty big danger, and that gives me a great uh, counter chances. Also, I can always put my king on b8 and break in the center with d5. Being down a piece doesn't mean much here because we just have a relatively great attacking chances. So after g takes h4, here I usually stop and give my students a uh, task and the question, would you take by rook or by queen? Uh, only two guys out of, for example, 10 or uh, 
uh, it's like 20% off. Uh, the guys find that rook h4 is a better. To be honest with you, queen h7 followed by queen h4 is not a mistake either. But don't, don't forget about one thing when you play queen h7. And they, for example, go like this. First of all, you got to deal with this one. Okay, you can take because they are going to give you check and uh, I don't know, they can take on e8 or what. Actually, they cannot take on e8, sorry. You go here, but you can go here because they will give you mate. And if you go here, they will give you check, this one, this one, and they're just going to meet you like this. So the thing is, um, I realized that taking my queen would uh, drive my queen away uh, from defending d7. And also would give them a pretty good counter chances so i decided to take by rook and there is also one more thing to remember it's known from the dragon let's say they don't even have the queen d7 let's say they don't have anything here even when i give check they can just play king f1 and i don't see an easy and fast way to carry on with the attack but look what's happening when you take by rook i capture by rook which i believe is uh, significantly better uh, than taking, uh, than playing queen uh, queen h7 and taking by queen on h4, he went for knight e4. Uh, I played queen h7, and here I'm threatening rook h1. So my threat is rook h1, and if he takes queen h2, checkmate. He played uh, rook f to d1. Uh, an interesting idea crossed my mind during the game. If he plays f3. I was thinking about the double sacrifice, actually a double exclamation mark move, queen takes c4. And after this, I thought about bishop c5. And here I stopped. Sometimes when you play rapid and blitz games, you can just give yourself um, a chance to play on emotions, uh, just intuitively to go for some kinds of things. Here I said to myself, okay, I'm, I have a piece for the queen, but he's, he has to give up rook. Uh, I, of course, uh, I would take it, and I simply assess this position uh, absolutely critical for him. So I have peace and rook for the queen. I have an attack. My pieces are way better. His king is just, you know, like running or trying to uh, running uh, around the game, trying to escape. But I kind of like my game a lot. He played rook f to d1, and the final shot was very nice. I play rook h1, bishop h1, queen h2. Uh, I was conducting a very well attack in this game. So here I captured the bishop, here I captured the knight, and after knight h2, my young opponent in fm uh, realized that he cannot go with a king g1 because of knight f3, and I would have uh, I would have won the queen. So he resigned after I played knight h2. Hope that you enjoyed the game. Uh, this was a nice anti-scotch game with the black pieces. Also, you could have uh, seen some of the main ideas for the Knight of Six continuation for black players. And hopefully, you're going to at least have better experience against scotch from now on. I want to tell you something. Uh, since I haven't uploaded so many videos lately, since I absolutely, uh, I, I mean, due to a lack of time, uh, now I'm going to upload a little bit more. And uh, since we're just reaching 25,000 subscribers these days, I just want to surprise you with your favorite format of uh, lectures on the channel. Uh, those are going to be step-by-step -step videos, but those are not going to be uh, some random openings or whatever, but probably the most popular ones. And get ready for the most popular step-by-step -step videos in the next couple of weeks. Thanks and once again, happy holidays. Bye-bye.